Hey everybody, I have kind of a special video for you today. Over the last month or so, I built a guitar amp. And actually, I started ordering parts to build this amp back in 2014, but then we got so busy at the mattress store that I just didn't make time to finish it. Uh, and about a month ago, I was like, I'm gonna finish that amp. So I've been working on it just a little bit every day, like an hour one day, 15 minutes another day. There was a day that I spent all day working on it. Um, that happened a couple of times, but in general, I worked on it about 45 minutes a day. So uh, I am completely done. I I've been playing it for days now. It it's awesome. Uh, and while I was building it, I posted to my Instagram story and I saved all that footage so I can share it here. Now it's not gonna be the 100% the best quality video you've ever seen uh, because most of it was just pointing my phone at the amp and talking. Uh, just it's your standard Instagram story stuff but I'm gonna go ahead and put it all together right here for you to watch if you're building an app and you're watching this to learn something or get some ideas then uh, be sure and do your own safety research because I don't know that I'm the perfect example of safe practices if you're not an app builder and this is boring to you if you just fast forward to the very last 10 seconds of the video there's a little clip of me playing the amp when it's done all right I made some progress I got the uh, controls wired up for the most part. I also got the last of the standoffs installed, tightened up everything that's uh, you know, all the tube sockets, and uh, getting ready to wire all the tube sockets next, I guess. Oh yeah, I made some progress today. I um, wired the uh, the preamp board. I also installed the transformer and the circuit board for the switching relays for the foot switch. So, preamp ready, ready to put in. Got most of my controls wired. All right, we're wiring up the uh, preamp tube sockets right now. All right guys, I made a lot of progress tonight. I uh, wired up the, uh, the overdrive tube socket. I uh, have not wired the clean channel tube socket yet because I'm not sure how I'm gonna do the uh, local negative feedback. Got the phase inverter tube socket wired. Got most of my controls hooked to the preamp board. And uh, I guess that's about it. It's made some pretty good progress tonight. Check it out, the head cabinet that I ordered on eBay arrived today. It's used, but it's in really good condition. The screws actually are an exact match for my chassis. So, uh, that's awesome. All right, well, I got some progress. I um, installed the relay boards and wired all that up. I, I redid the, the mid switch so that it could be on a relay so it could be foot switchable. All right, well, I didn't get a ton of work done on the amp today. I uh, I did get the power tubes. I started, I put the, put the, the resistors in um, and soldered the side that's not gonna have a wire. I finished wiring the, uh, the power tube sockets. Well, not exactly finished because I uh, didn't have enough one ohm resistors. I had to hit up Mauser and order a bag of them. Oops. Basically everything other than the transformer hookups and the cathodes are wired. I uh, received a package with some small parts today. Some of the leftover stuff I need. And just some supplies also. I did receive the filter cap so I can start to wire the, uh, the power section all the way. Also picked up the uh, different type of fuse holder because the one that's in there, you can't see it's dark in here, but Chris Pryor had a terrible experience with the, the other kind, so I think the other kind's Marshall style and this is Fender style, something like that. Alright, well Amanda gave me the day off, so I, I spent an hour and a half or so soldering, which is a really relaxing kind of meditation for me because I'm just, I sit in silence and in my mind. I got the power section pretty much done. Uh, the rectifier boards, rectifier boards not in there, um, and no transformers yet. But other than that, it's it's mostly done. I mainly just need the transformer wiring. Okay, I finished wiring up the uh, bias probe jacks. I also wired the half power switch, which was a little tricky because I wanted to have the bias probe jacks and the half power switch, and they work off of the uh, the same pin on the. They both work off of the cathode pin on the uh, tube socket on the 6L6. Also did some of the shielded wire connections, which this is shielded wire. 
it's a lot more work than uh, regular wire. It's my least favorite thing in electronics, I think. I hate shielded wire, man. And I've decided for sure I'm gonna add a fourth relay, and I'm not sure where. Maybe over here somewhere, maybe on this side. There's gonna be a, a circuit board right there. I might be able to fit another relay right here. Um, I'm gonna do a four or even five button foot switch, probably four. My relay transformer and the um, voltage regulator have plenty of amps to do more, more relays. So I wanna do the FET boost, the mid boost, the preamp boost, the overdrive, and uh, I might also put the um, I might also put the bright switch on a relay um, and put it all on the foot, all on the foot control. Um, and what that would do would give me the option to put little jumpers on the inside and make it so that when I hit the overdrive button, it activates the bright switch or not. Or more, more, more likely, when I'm in clean, the, the bright switch would be engaged. But when I went to overdrive, it would disable. Um, I've, I've done stuff like that in my current foot control. I had the preamp boost only on the overdrive channel, so. Okay, I didn't get a ton of work done today, but I got the last of the shielded wire done. And that's a big milestone for me because I hate stripping shielded wire so much. I also got this pack of fresh 9 volts, which this thing right here set off the alarm when we left Kroger. <laughs> but that means that I can set up the FET board without having to uh, power up the amp. Well, I spoke too soon. I forgot I'm doing the external overdrive trimmer instead of doing the internal overdrive trimmer right there. And that means I have to run two more shielded wires. So, you know. Okay, well, I didn't get a ton done tonight on the amp, but I did get some stuff done. I got the uh, impedance selector installed and um, the main wire soldered to the uh, output jacks. I got the shielded wire runs uh, for the overdrive trimmer finished. That's really about it. Tomorrow I'm going to uh, install the heater wires most likely and the wires to the lamp, which is kind of a big deal. That's like finalizing the, uh, the tube sockets. All right guys, I got the uh, DIN jack wired for uh, three of the relays. I have two more to do. This is where the cable that goes to the foot switch will plug in, right around there, right there, the pedal. And uh, I'm gonna have a five button foot switch, so I'll have a lot of tonal options uh, on the stage. The amp that this is a clone of had a two button foot switch, uh, just a preamp boost and overdrive. So this one's gonna have uh, some of the front panel switch options on a foot switch. It's also gonna have the FET on a foot switch. Um, and this is a push pull, so we'll be able to turn the FET on without the foot switch if we really want to. I also uh, wired the lamp, which it just is wired over here to this terminal strip right now. That's going to connect to the heater wires when I install the heater wires. But I'm going to do that like pretty much last because they're hard to work around once they're in. It's like some wires that work. Yeah, the heater wires, they run above the sockets. So once they're in, if you need to make any changes to the stuff soldered to the socket, it's a big hassle. All right, guys, I am haunted by shielded wire. I realized I hadn't run the shielded wire from the volume pot that goes to the uh, first tube socket, so got that done. Also drilled some different holes than the standard ones because I'm adding two more relay boards than uh, uh, the standard build so that I can have, um, I'm actually adding three more, so that I can have everything on a five button foot switch. Basically they'll fit like that. Oh and an update on the transformers, I talked to the uh, people where I ordered the transformers and they were like oh we're sorry we, we were back ordered they're gonna ship out on Tuesday so I'm expecting them to ship out tomorrow alright guys not a whole lot tonight but I got the relay for the bright switch and I decided on not the two capacitor bright switch just the standard deal but it's also on a relay so that I can control it with the foot switch oh yeah and I also hooked the uh, FET board up to an 18 volt source and biased it so that the JFET has half voltage at the uh, drain. Also, my transformers supposedly shipped today. I still don't have a tracking number, but they did update my order status. So we'll see. Um, I'm really close. I still haven't wired the heater wires. I still have to install the FET board and set up the relay for that. Still have to uh, put the, the rectifier board in and uh, I bid on a five button foot switch that's broken on eBay for $9. 
I'd love to win that. It's like 60 bucks to get one that's not broken, and I don't need one that works. I'm literally going to rebuild it. Even if I have to buy a brand new one, I'm going to drill a new hole, install a MIDI or DIN jack in it, and replace the switches. So it's like I'd rather get the broken one for cheap because I just need the enclosure. Well, there's the transformers. It took a little while to get them here, but uh, that's them. I haven't opened the box yet. I need to open it up and make sure they sent me the right ones. I'm sure they did. Well, that's like when you get a, a mean gift where you open the box and then there's a box in the box that's taped up again. That's what's going on. There they are. I can see the iron. See the iron peeking out? Now, I've actually done some work since the last time I, I told you about it. I, I've got the FET board done, the relay board for the FET board. All this needs to basically just be installed right there. A couple of wires need to be soldered up. Um, but pretty much done with the amp other than... Yeah, I'm pretty much done with the amp other than uh, installing the transformers and running the heater wires. Uh, putting the relays in the relay boards, you know, just the very last few steps are all that's left. I did win. I did win the bid for a five-button Marshall foot switch that's broken, which is amazing because I think I, I got it for nine dollars plus sixteen dollars shipping, uh, which is great because normally it's a sixty or seventy dollars foot switch. And, and I've got to install a MIDI jack on that and rewire it, whether I buy a brand new one or not. So get it, in, and I'm gonna paint it too. Uh, so I can label it how I want. So yeah, that was a steal. I did get a little bit done on the amp. I got the transformers uh, bolted on. They're not wired up or anything, but there they are. There's the power transformer, the choke, and the output transformer. So yeah, I got a lot of soldering to do. Okay, I've been pretty sick. Had a fever for a couple of days, like a head cold or a sinus infection. You can still hear it in my voice, but I got some work done on the amp today. I'm feeling a little better. Got the power transformer installed. Got the output transformer installed. I did the heater wires. Yeah, see those wires that go all the way across and they twist right there? I have all the relays put in. I have the last of the switches. I've just been going over it with a uh, multimeter, trying to make sure I'm not missing anything triple checking the uh, polarity of the caps and the diodes you know just doing the things you're supposed to do uh, I did find one solder joint it was right there that I hadn't soldered I had just tied the wires on so I took care of that one weird thing I, I don't know if the nut got cross threaded or what but the the push pull pot right here it come it's going at a little bit of an angle you, you can see it I'm gonna leave it because it's fun. I have tubes on the way. I still need to get a speaker so I can do a proper 112 setup. And I'm gonna put a dot of Loctite on basically every nut. Like, every nut. I'm gonna put a dot of Loctite on there. All right guys, tonight I actually powered the amp on through the bulb limiter. Uh, I don't have any tubes installed. And I'm not gonna mess with it anymore. I just uh, did some basic testing, make sure the bias voltage was right, and that the uh, B plus power Basically all the voltages looked right uh, through the bulb limiter, everything I could check at least, and uh, all the relays switched on with the manual switches. I have to build the foot switch to test most of them. I set this one up with an 8 pin DIN connection, but it will actually work with my other foot switch that's a 5 pin, but it only has 3 buttons. See that down there? See that dog down there? With the 8 pin cable, I'm able to foot switch five things, which is basically everything except for the rock slash jazz switch. Uh, but with the 5 pin, I'm only able to switch overdrive, preamp boost, and mid boost. Uh, so I'm not gonna mess with it tonight. I've been tracking the packages, and the story is that everything's gonna show up today. So here in a little while, hopefully, I'll show you guys powering up my new amp for the first time. So before we put the tubes in it, we always want to test it with a current limiter, which is, I have this circuit rigged up where the light bulb is in series with the electricity from the wall. It's exactly what you want to see. When you flip the standby switch, it'll, it'll bump one more time. I could take the power tubes out of one of my other amps, but I have power tubes coming in the middle of the day, and I checked and they're out for delivery. They were supposed to be here yesterday, so I would have done more of these tests yesterday. I don't know I don't know if it was express mail instead of priority mail or what, but it didn't get here the day it was supposed to. 
And so, when my tubes arrive, I can do a few more tests. Um, first, I'll put the preamp tubes in. I'll take some voltages. If that looks right, I will put the power tubes in and hook a speaker up. And if nothing goes crazy right then, I'll plug a guitar in and we will, we will see if we can hear this thing. One of the possible things that can go wrong is that everything seems right and then you plug a guitar in and it makes no sound or the guitar signal doesn't come through or it just doesn't sound right. No matter what, all of that's okay, we can figure it out. Look at, right. that, look at that guys, I got, the, I got the speaker. I haven't opened it yet, Jazzy's checking it out. All right dudes, I got my speaker. I got Chris Spurrier on the phone right there too. Say hello to the vlog. What's up? What's up? <laughs> so, I got my speaker, I got it installed. I'm gonna have to uh, strip my speaker wire and just put it through the holes, which I think is kind of weird, but I'm gonna go for it. All right, there it is. Got the speaker installed in the cabinet. You know, that's the head up there. It's gonna bug me that I have a tweed speaker cabinet and a black Tolex head cabinet. That's gonna bug me. I have to do something about that eventually. But this is the cabinet that I have. Also, this doesn't have the really the proper back for the style of amp that I'm building. But it's gonna do the job for now. This has been the longest day of waiting for stuff ever. I guess because I'm waiting for packages, the mailman didn't come until like 6 p.m. So also I'm waiting on my preamp tube. I got my power tubes. Mailman showed up. Waiting on my preamp tubes. Uh, someone's driving them from Fort Worth because I, I have Amazon Prime and where I'm at. They just send some person in a car to bring you stuff. Okay, well this should be my power tubes. I hope they weren't in that little area right there. <laughs> that looks pretty safe. Went with the uh, Softec, Softec. I, uh, I put them in my other amp and I really like them. They have a brightness that's not harsh that I like. Uh, we'll see, if I don't like them, then I've got a good backup set of tubes and I can order something different. All right guys, I'm not gonna wait anymore. I am going to use some random 12AX7 valves, tubes, valves. British people call them valves. I, I don't know if valve is the right word or tube, but I grew up calling them tubes. I'm gonna use some uh, random 12AX7 tubes in here and just uh, see if I can get it going. Uh, and then I'm waiting on three 12AX7s to come in the mail. They should be here today, but I'm impatient. Got four 12AX7s here. It's gotta be three of these that work good enough to test the stamps, so that's what we're gonna do. There's one, there's two, and there's three. I'm gonna go ahead and power it up with the bulb limiter and just make sure that nothing's shorted with the tubes ins with the preamp tubes inserted. One last time with the bulb limiter. Here we go. Yeah, that's that's what we wanna see. Put on operate. That's what we want to see. All right, we're gonna put we're gonna put the power tubes in now. So we've got the speaker hooked up because once you're working with power tubes installed, if your speaker's not hooked up, you can damage your output transformer. There's a myth that I heard my whole life that you aren't supposed to touch the glass on a tube. Well, it's a myth. Google it. Oh my gosh, guys! There's a whole set of power tubes installed in this amp. To start with, everything turned all the way down. I'm gonna power it up with a bulb limiter and make sure that there's no shorts with the tubes in. There shouldn't be. That's what we want to see. We're going to take it off a of standby. Everything's still cool. I have my exposure set pretty high on my camera, but this is just barely glowing. So when you're working with the tube amp plugged in, really anytime, but when you're working with the tube amp plugged in, you're supposed to keep one, one hand in your pocket because you don't ever want to put both hands in because you don't want to create the path of electricity through your heart. I try to observe that rule. Sometimes I don't put my hand in my pocket, but uh, I try to be pretty cautious because I don't want to get shocked. I'm not even worried about dying. I'm worried about getting shocked in the first, but that's bad enough. All right, let's do some measurements here. What do we have? Plates. All right, it's, it's time to pull the uh, bulb limiter and see what we've got. Everything is, uh, so far everything's fine. All right guys, this is it. Um, I'm going to power this amp up for the first time with uh, no current limiter. Standby switch on standby. Say mains on, standby on standby. Tubes are glowing. Let's measure my B plus voltage. Oh yeah, that's 460 volts. That looks good. 
This multimeter is not giving me the readings that I'm looking for. <laughs> oh, the stupidest reason. <laughs> because I'm still in standby. All right, let's come out of standby. All right, 54 on the bias. That's really high, let's turn that down. Yeah, oh good, good. We're getting a usable range, let's put it at 30. Everything's looking good, guys. I'm getting a ton of texts. Great job, exclamation point. That's awesome. My overdrive relay is wired backwards. Feel a little, I feel a little like an idiot for not really verifying my relay uh, hookup. But, you know. My FET. FET circuit's not working right. The clean channel sounds awesome. guys the amp is working when I first powered it up you know with a speaker and a guitar the uh, the FET circuit wasn't biased properly so I had to fix that got that going and also the overdrive relay the overdrive relay I had wired it where it was overdrive by default and clean when you turn the overdrive switch so oops I had to rewire that relay um, and then I think I discovered that my other amp is wired the mid, the mid switch didn't sound like I expected to, so I checked the wiring and double checked and triple checked that it's wired the way it's supposed to be, and it is wired the way it's supposed to be, which means my other amp does something different when you. I think I, I think I may have it uh, wired where the mid switch, when it's turned off, is actually on with this amp. Uh, because when I engage the mids on this amp, it seems to give a boost, and the new amp doesn't do that. All right guys, well, I figured out the mid boost was wired wrong in my new amp, not my old amp. So I got that taken care of and uh, solved a few more problems. Mounted the, the chassis to the head cab in a better way using those little keeper nuts. This amp sounds awesome. Uh, my old amp sounds great, but this amp sounds even better, I think. I, you know, and it's funny because I really took some time to blueprint the other amp for me. Uh, man, awesome. <laughs> 